So one thing is the fact that uh, here is common to talk about money, about personal finance, while in Italy it's absolutely a taboo. Pancrazio Alteri is an Italian who has lived in the United States for more than a decade. Over time, he noticed that a big cultural difference between Americans and Italians is the way we approach finances. Nobody talks about personal income and nobody asks about it. It's considered uh, a, a big invasion of privacy, uh, while in America is normal to uh, talk about finance, about personal investments, how to uh, ensure income in retirement. In Italy, it's not really talked about, but that's because the government assumes more responsibility than individuals. And families take care of each other throughout life. So that grandparents paying for the kindergarten or for buying the first house for young couples. And, uh, and, and it's enabled, I think, how the families stay together. So in America, it's very common to talk to people that left home uh, when they were 20 or 19 going to college and never go back home. In Italy, the families, they keep in touch very often. Uh, the families are, are very connected. While in America, there is the student loan that really starts that financial madness in the wrongest way possible. <laughs> Don't start with a debt. But why do Italians and Americans approach finances so differently in the first place? Could it be a difference between the American ethos of individualism and a European focus on community? Michelle Bene is a neighbor of mine in Los Gatos, California. She recalls being in Germany and feeling that it would be socially unacceptable to stick to an American habit. I remember there being no traffic on the roads, but people were standing waiting to cross the road. They wouldn't cross unless there was a traffic sign that told them they could cross. And I thought as an American, it was the most bizarre thing. We had to stand and wait while there were no cars until the light turned that we would cross the street. In Germany, the culture is to not really question authority. In America, we question authority, we express our emotions and our beliefs a lot more readily. For Miriam Scobel, it was a move to San Jose, California from her native Iran in the 1980s that upended everything she took for granted in her universe. My ideology changed in so many ways, one of which that I can exemplify was the way I thought about everyone from Iraq. I, I hated the Iraqis. They were bombing us. Uh, I lost cousins um, in war. Um, my best friend's brother, 16-year-old brother, never came back. Um, I always thought that if I ever meet someone from Iraq that I'd want to kill them, that I just, you know, because they had taken away so much. And so when I came to the States, obviously those feelings were really strong. Uh, I was in high school and one of my teachers um, said to me, oh, there, there are two sisters that just joined our high school and they're from Iraq. And since you're from the similar part of the uh, world, I, I thought you should meet. And at first I was like, oh, I don't want to meet these people. Like I was just so upset. And then I got to meet them and they were super sweet and we had so many similarities that we had differences they of course had lost family and friends to the war and i think if i'd grown up in iran i would have been a lot more conservative a lot more closed-minded and uh, would have kept a lot of resentment towards uh, and a lot of biases towards an array of people based on what I was being taught in school based was I was experiencing every day and based on what the media was telling me. But travel, being at, getting outside of your comfort zone, having different experiences definitely opens your mind. So perhaps the next time you disagree with someone, try to understand how they formed their ideology in the first place. Because after all, it's only when we can see these assumptions that we can change them. For Philosophy Talk, I'm Sarah Lai Sterland. <laughs>